Anything else, Mr. Saunders? No, thank you, Robert. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. reptile whose name he so appropriately assumes the cobra creeps closer and closer suddenly he leaps on his unwary prey and then his fingers tighten on the victim's throat in a vice-like grip jerry Stop. jerry this is your pal mike Strager. oh oh i'm sorry gosh i wanted the program to be so real i i forgot we were just rehearsing you know, I'm such a good actor, I was carried away by my own performance. The trouble is, you weren't carried far enough. That's all for now, boys. I think that'll give Mr. Marsh a sketchy idea. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> well, all I have to do now is write the finish. How do you like it, Mr. Marsh? Very good, Miss Brent. You've written an excellent script. <laughs> Thanks to you. You know, your theories on the Cobra case have helped us tremendously. Yeah, it isn't everyone that can have the help of Latimer Marsh, the great criminologist. Oh, it's my pleasure. Although I don't suppose the police would appreciate my efforts in your behalf. They keep wondering where we get our information. If you get any smarter, we're going to look like geniuses. Oh. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, perhaps I'd better be running along. Uh, uh, Mr. Marsh, I want to thank you. You know, before you came along, well, I was just a, another radio actor. Now everybody thinks I'm a great detective. Not everybody. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to ask me before I go? No. Only I wish I knew what the Cobra is going to do with Saunders. Well, at this time, I wouldn't dare to conjecture what the Cobra's future plans are. <laughs> well, goodbye, Miss Brent. Goodbye. Goodbye, boys. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Marsh. Goodbye, Mr. Marsh. Hey, Jerry, what does conjecture mean? Huh? Conjecture? Uh -huh. Oh, that's a cinch. You see, uh, if you had a, uh, if there was a little, uh, if you met someone that said, well, how would you like to, you'd have to feel that you couldn't, you'd have to be certain if... Conjecture means to guess. Oh, it does. <laughs> well, in that case, I conjecture I'll go to lunch. <laughs> You know, if he had another brain, he'd have one. Once again, you hear the persistent footsteps of those dauntless radio detectives, Miles and Strager, as they continue their relentless pursuit of all perpetrators of crime. And now, the crime of the week will be analyzed for you by those masterminds of the air, those ace slews of the ether waves, Jerry Miles and Mike Strager. A few nights ago, while the citizens of our fair city slept, confident that their person and property were being protected by our vigilant police, the Cobra struck again. Once more, that odious envoy of evil slithered unnoticed and unapprehended past the apathetic and unalert minions of the law into the very home of his prey brazenly defying and outwitting our police force. This vicious human reptile continues to terrorize our populace. This time, the Cobra's victim is John Saunders, the prominent industrial tycoon, philanthropist, and bibliophile. Mr. Strager and I will now reconstruct the Cobra's latest crime as we believe it actually occurred. John Saunders is alone in the library of his spacious home. A cozy fire is crackling in the hearth. Saunders is browsing through his valuable collection of first editions. <sighs> Suddenly, his attention is attracted by the creaking of a window being cautiously opened. But the opening of the window was only a clever diversion to draw Saunders' attention away from the French door. I As don't Saunders think you should have told him that, sir. I didn't. Is that girl who writes the scripts? By a terrific She's clever. Head. Has a good imagination. Maybe too good for our good, sir. <laughs> Stone is worried, Mr. Saunders, that my success in baffling the police for so many years has a tendency to make me overconfident and careless. I know you enjoy making the police look ridiculous, sir. But to keep Saunders right here in your own house until the ransom money is paid, 
Playing with dynamite, sir. You should know that my ransom notes are merely red headings to mislead the very stupid police. I'm only holding Mr. Saunders that I determined upon some interesting way to effect his demise. However, if his presence here causes you so much apprehension, we will dispose of him tonight. The cobra oh. intends to Turn off the radio stone. Yes. No need to bore you, Mr. Saunders, with any more of this. You won't hear anything you don't already know. Although I dare say the police will. Excuse me. We're on the air, sir. I'm Lieutenant Campbell, police department. Yes, sir. In the driveway, the fresh air revives Saunders. He comes to <sighs> and struggles desperately with his captors. <laughs> 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 Again, he is silenced <clears throat> and rushed into the car of his kidnappers. In our opinion, the ransom angle in the Saunders case is only a ruse to fool the police. The Cobra's real motive is to satisfy his diabolical, sadistic desires. Now that the Cobra has had time to get sufficient pleasure out of tormenting and torturing his victim, we predict that within 24 hours, the body of John Saunders will be found murdered. Yes, murdered. And once again, the Cobra will have made the police force look like a bunch of correspondent school amateurs. Accomplishing nothing, protecting no one. Right, and as far as the Detective Bureau is concerned, that Lieutenant, that Lieutenant Campbell ought to be arrested for impersonating a police officer. Well, how do you like that? For further inside developments and exclusive predictions in the Cobra case, listen to our next broadcast of The Crime of the Week. Pleasure. We sure pinned that Rick Campbell's ears back, didn't we? Yeah, and that stooge of his, he'd look better with his ears like that. <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> oh, hiya, Bottle. Give him an autograph in a minute. Oh, oh, hello, Lieutenant Campbell. We were just talking about you. So I heard. Now we'll talk about you. You two masterminds have been taking a lot of cracks at the police department. Well, I'll tell you why. You guys aren't getting anywhere on the Cobra case. That's right. You should be out looking for him now instead of hanging around here. When I want any advice from you, I'll ask you for it. You know, the boys were just ad-libbing. I didn't write that in the script. Well, that was a pretty good hunk of predicting about Saunders being found murdered. I know it must annoy you the way our predictions have been coming true lately. No. We're wondering where you get your inside information. Maybe I don't get any. Maybe I'm just psychic. Maybe I just get hunches. Maybe I get hunches, too. Really? Like what? Oh, nothing. We'll say you're a good guesser and let it go with that. Listen to that glorified flatfoot trying to make a hit with Ellen. <laughs> yeah, he won't even get to first base. Yeah? How come? Because confidentially, I'm the guy. Oh. You probably don't get a chance to go out much. Evenings. Mm, once in a while. Why? I was thinking if you do go out evenings alone, you should have some police protection. You know, I think you're right. Say, Gilly, what are you doing tonight? Well, uh, um, well tonight I could take you home. Well, I think that's very nice of you. And so do I. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello. Oh, wait a minute. Where are you going? Oh, uh, Lieutenant Campbell is seeing me home. But why? Well, Miss Brent doesn't seem to realize what a dangerous character the Cobra is. He may attempt to kill you or any of us. Uh, uh, Lieutenant, you don't really think that the Cobra might do something to, uh, to us? It's possible. Thanks. Gee, I never thought of that. Now that I thought of it, I wish I hadn't. How could they have been so certain that he would be murdered? You surely didn't tell him that, sir. Of course not, Stone. That's another of Miss Brent's guesses. Well, that's one of her guesses. She might even guess that you're the Cobra. You're right, Stone. I've been letting my vanity get the better of my judgment. I'll throw a scare into them. Got to make them drop this Cobra case from now on. Boy, is this going to make big shots out of us. Yeah. Imagine Ellen figuring that one out right on the button. Yep. <laughs> Allow me. Hello? Who? Oh, how are you, Mr. Marsh? Who is it? Mr. Say, have you seen the evening headlines? Yes, I have. 
There's something I must see you, Miss Brett, about immediately. Meet me at the Club Oriental in about half an hour. Yes, sir. We'll be right there. Where? Club Oriental. Come on. I wonder what he found out this time. I don't know, but we can't afford to pass up any information he gives us. Table, sir? Oh, uh, we're looking for a Mr. Marsh. Does he have a table? Yes, sir. Right this way, please. May I check your head, please? You know, I don't mind seeing Mr. Marsh. I like him. But that stone guy, sometimes he gives me the creeps. No, oh, that's just your imagination. You think so? Well, good evening, boys. How are you, Marsh? Yeah, sit right down. Thank, Thank you, sir. Where's Miss Brent? I thought you was coming, too. Well, we couldn't reach her. She had a date. Well, that's too bad. Well, gentlemen, let's eat, drink, and be merry. Oh, hey, I know that one. That's a famous quotation. Let's see. Let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That's right. That's a nice toast. I bet you didn't think I knew stuff like that. <laughs> for tomorrow we... we, uh... Die? I've lost my thirst. <laughs> Yo! What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a menu before? Look! Oh! oh. The... the cobra! It's on my menu, too. He must be in this very room with us. Well, let's not us be in this very room with him. Not so fast. He might be waiting outside for us. I know this type of criminal. Merciless. He'd kill all three of us without compunction. Well, I don't want to even be killed with compunction. But gentlemen, we've got to talk this matter over. Do we have to do it here? There's no time to waste. The thing for us to do is exactly what the Cobra warned us to do. Withdraw from the case. Otherwise, we should be found just as Solomon's was found. Murder. Isn't there some other way we could be found? The Cobra gives no choice. Now, what do you say, gentlemen? Shall we withdraw from the case? I, I don't know. Ellen wouldn't like it. You've got to make her like it for her own good. But I... Touch. Jerry! It's the Cobra! Well, don't you stand there. Stop running. Wait a minute. It's just a dancer. Just a dancer. Oh, yeah. It's just a dancer. I knew it all the time. It's your nose, boys. You can't stand attention. You're cracking. He's cracked already. We know when the cobra is ready to plunge that long bladed knife into any one of us. Help! It's the cobra! He's after me! The cobra! Let's get out of here! Wait! Wait! There was a note on that knife. Marsh, Miles, and Straker. This is your last warning. Get off the cobra's trail or take the consequences. Sign the cobra. Oh, brother, I don't want any consequences. Let's go. I think you're right. Jerry! Jerry! What is the consequence? Oh, this is no time to get education. Come on! I don't care what Mr. Marsh or anybody says. We're not going to drop the Cobra case. But, Ellen, besides the danger, it's getting us into a lot of trouble. The police department is madder than ever, and the mayor has threatened to bar our program from the air. Oh, he can't do that. Or can he? Well, he can make a lot of trouble for us. That's why we've got to catch the cobra ourselves. Oh, well, now you're talking. I could go for some... What? You you mean us? That's right. We're going to dump the cobra right in the mayor's lap. Then let's see him abolish from the air. <laughs> Our radio show will go right up to the top. We'll have more fans than a crooner. Say, maybe Ellen's right. I can see those Bobby Soxes now swooning every time they hear Miles and Strager. First, we've got to pacify the police department. On our next broadcast, you boys are going to make them a public apology. A what? That's right. You mean we got to kiss and make up with that lug? Exactly. Uh, well, I'll make up. You kiss him. That might not be such a bad idea. But uh, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to the police department to see Lieutenant Campbell. Lieutenant Campbell, if you do, I won't be here when you get back. Uh, can I depend upon that?
That footprint was the only one found near Saunders' body. A woman's, huh? That's right. Yes? Miss Ellen Brent here to see you, Lieutenant. Oh, she is? Fine. Send her right in. I didn't know you were expecting her. I wasn't. Don't say anything to her about that. Okay. Do I dare come in? Always glad to see a good predictor. <laughs> I really hit the jackpot last night, didn't I? You didn't have to blame the police department. Well, that's why I'm here. You see, I came to invite you and your department to our next broadcast. We're going to have a big party right in the studio, and while Jerry and Mike are on the air, they're going to apologize. Well, I'll just square you with the mayor. <laughs> Chief wants you, Rick. Okay. Will you excuse me? I'll be right back. Well, I'd better not wait. I know you've got a busy day ahead of you, so, uh, well, I'll see you at the party. All right. Uh, Miss Brent, any girls? No. Better bring your wife. Better... Allow me. Hello? Uh, did you talk things over with Miss Brent? Oh, she's going ahead anyhow. Hmm. Well, let me speak to her. Oh, no, she's not here. Uh, she just left for police headquarters. Oh, I see. Well, I'll get in touch with her later. She's on her way to police headquarters. Police headquarters? Perhaps if you get her out here on some excuse, we might persuade her to forget any ideas she might have. Mr. Marsh to ever see his file. Yeah, you know, when I was a kid, I always thought a file was something you put in a layer cake. What for? Oh, in case you had an uncle in jail. Uh, Stone! 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 Coming, sir. Coming. Where are Lady Guinevere's shoes? Her shoes? Oh, yes. Here they are, sir. I haven't uh, cleaned them yet, sir. You careless fool. Don't you realize the mud in those shoes can be traced directly to the scene of Saunders' murder? Yes, sir. That would be Miss Brent and her two masterminds. Open the door. What about the shoes, sir? No time now. See that no one comes near this room. And don't forget to clean those shoes later. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Ah, good evening, my friend. Hello, Hi. Mr. Marsh. Hi. This is indeed a pleasant occasion for me. We don't often have visitors at Marsh Manor. It is rather lonesome out here. Well, I prefer to think that Marsh Manor enjoys uh, <laughs> seclusion. <laughs> now, uh, this is where I work. Oh, but first of all, uh, there's a room over here I want you to see. I only show it to my very special guests, such as you. And this is my hobby room. The, the nice place you have here. Yeah. Uh, where do you keep the ghosts? Are these your hobbies? Some people collect stamps, or old china. But I find these much more interesting. Well, of course, if it makes you happy, well... Happiness may be nothing more to me than relaxing in a comfortable chair with one of my books. Of course, each of these has its individual history. Look them over. You might get a better idea of what these instruments can accomplish when applied for a purpose. Huh? Oh, never mind, never mind. He can never understand sentences more than three words long. My implication is clear to you, of course. Oh, sure, sure. Good. Then I'll leave you here to your own devices. And now, Miss Brent, if you'll kindly come with me, I'll show you the file on the Cobra case. Uh... Jerry, what's an implication? Well, it's like an application, only you don't have to fill it out. Oh, I see. You know, I didn't understand what Mr. Marsh was talking about, but I, I sure didn't like the way it sounded. I wonder what he meant by those uh, gadgets being applied for a purpose. He's talking about in the olden times. Let's see if some of them work. <laughs> Look at that. That fellow's chopping wood, and this fellow's checking up to see how much work he's got done. Are you kidding? Oh, he's going to have his noggin lopped off. Why, is he too tall? You're hopeless. He's going to be executed. He is? Well, somebody ought to tip him off. A guy can get killed that way. Hey, Jerry, I wonder what that funny thing over there is for. I don't know, but it's got some kind of razor on top. A razor, huh? I wonder what they used to use for a haircut. <laughs> what do you see? Huh? What do you see? Nothing. This thing looks kind of harmless to me. What was that? Don't lose your head now. You know, that's not bad. If you hold your face just right, a guy can get a pretty close shave. Yeah, but suppose you don't hold your face just right. Oh, then you wouldn't have to bother to shave at all. 
No wonder guys let their beards grow in those days. Come on, let's look at some of the other knickknacks. Hmm. Hello. Oh, out to lunch, I guess. Oh, I wonder what this thing's for. Look at it. I don't know, but if that thing over there is for shaving, this must be for, uh, for combing your hair. Combing your hair? Uh-huh. Well, at least you might get a finger wave out of it anyway. Yeah, and it ain't as tough as the machines the women use these days. Hey, Mike, you've always liked my curly hair. Why don't you try it? You look good with a wave. I wonder how you start it. Yeah, but suppose it waves my head instead of my hair. Even that would be an improvement. Mm. <laughs> Jerry, it works. <laughs> yeah, but it's not making my hair curl. It's making it stand up on end. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brent. I completely forgot, but I have an appointment in town. However, we can continue this some other time. We've got to start yelling for help. Help! Help! Help, Mr. Marsh! Help! Help, Mr. Marsh! Alan! Help! 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 Somebody help us! Oh, help! Oh, you! Good heavens! You and your dumb ideas! I'll climb out! I never should have come with you in the first place! Help! 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 Get us out of here! Yeah. Why did you ever tell me to pull that lever? Oh, I'm sorry, boys. I should have warned you not to play around with these things. Well, uh, we'd better be going, Mr. Marsh, before anybody gets into any more trouble. Oh, that's too bad. Just as the boys are beginning to enjoy themselves. Enjoy ourselves? Say, that thing is dangerous. You ought to send for a plumber and have it fixed. The only man that can fix that hasn't been around here for 300 years. <laughs> 300 years? Say, that's late, even for a plumber. Yeah, even for a plumber. Alan, did you find what you were looking for? Why, yes. Mr. Marsh has been very helpful. Oh, gee, that's swell. We ought to get a great script out of this for the broadcast at the party. Care to come along and hear us apologize to Lieutenant Campbell? Well, uh, I'm afraid I should be rather busy that evening. Uh, but I will be listening. <laughs> well, uh, good night, Mr. Marsh. And thanks again. Not at all. Good night, Mr. Marsh. You're back. Good night, oh, good night sir. Good night. Good night. Yes. I surmise that she does suspect a stone. But we can't be sure yet. Are you going to follow them into town? <laughs> they are not going into town. Neither are we. Curiosity killed the cat stone. See. Will very likely kill Miss Brent also. Put up the lights, please. What are you stopping here for? Now, uh, don't tell me we're out of gas. We're gonna wait till Marsh and Stone leave for town. Then we're going back to Marsh Manor. Back to Marsh Manor? What for? Well, Marsh has a certain file he didn't want me to see. I'm going back and take a look at it. Car conductor, look at me now. Come on, come on, come on. Jerry and I are going to have a look at that file. You stay here and keep watch. By myself, certainly. Then if you see anyone, just yell. That'll give Ellen and me a chance to get away. Oh, sure, okay. to prove he wasn't kidding. We've got to get it open. Oh, we've got to get it open just like that, huh? Suppose it's a booby trap. Booby trap? Sure, don't you know what a booby trap is? It's a round thing with wires. I know, but why should that be a booby trap? Well, wait, I didn't finish. A booby trap's got wires that go up and down. It's, it's, a, it's a coil. Then there's a condenser. Then there's the loose connections. That's bad, loose connections. I used to have a lot of loose connections. Then we moved to another neighborhood. That thing could blow you up. 
As soon as you go to touch it, that's a good time to change your mind. Mind? If I listen to you, I'll go out of my mind. Now, come on, we've got to force this thing open. Okay, but if it is a booby trap, I'll see you there. Where? On the roof. But I get the hairpin out. Here, let me try it. You men are all so helpless. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I dress myself. Well, I do. Jerry! 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 Where are you? Where are you? I asked you first! I asked First. Oh, this is going to get monotonous. Hello? Hello? Let's get out of this place. Yes, that would be a very wise idea. That's what I think. Oh, brother! Jerry! Jerry! <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, folks. Uh, you see, I, I didn't mean to butt in like this. I, I'm looking for a friend of mine. Uh, Bud, can't you take time out for just a minute? You know, they're wax dummies. Huh. Maybe that's why they didn't answer me. If I weren't such a lady, you know what I'd say to you. Ella, look what I got here. This bazooka ought to do the trick. It probably hasn't been fired since the 17th century. Yeah? Marsh ought to trade it in on a new model. What, the, what has he got in here, a cannonball? Stand back. Got hey, that'll make an awful lot of noise. Well, what do you want to do? Stick to hairpins just because they can't be heard? Here. Hold it. Bring it over here. Do you want me to do all the work? Just lift it up. I'll do the firing. Jerry, use your brains. Brains? If I had any brains, I wouldn't even be here. You better stand back and put your fingers in my ears. You never know what's coming out of there. One. Two. Two and a half. Two and three quarters? Three. three. You tell me this is some kind of a nutcracker. It could be. Better keep your head out of the way. Yeah, I'll watch it, huh? Oh. Hmm. Mud. It's real mud. Doesn't seem possible that she's been out for a walk. I guess that's her business. And besides, if a lady wants to take her shoes off, I guess that's her business too, huh? What's the matter, George? You don't feel so good? Wait a minute. Take her shoes off? She can't. She's wax. They're gone. Oh, but they can't be. There's nobody else in this room but me and the other dummies. Oh, brother. Jerry! Jerry! Oh, Stone. Did you call Mr. Strager? Yes. Her shoes. They were lying here a minute ago, and now they're gone. They didn't walk off by themselves. Or could they? Nonsense, Mr. Strager. I'm sure you're mistaken. She never had any shoes. No shoes? No shoes. But they were lying. Oh, brother. Let me out of here. I'm seeing things. Yes, sir. You're seeing things you shouldn't be seeing. Listen, bud, just keep your nose out of other people's business. I know what I'm doing. Oh, Mr. Marsh. Mr. Marsh, you remember Mr. Marsh? He lives here. Oh. Well, you can't say I was carrying a concealed weapon. Well, I guess I'll put it back where I found it. If you tell me what you're looking for, I might be able to help you. Well, I left some of my notes here, and... I didn't think you were home, and 
The French window was unlocked, so I... Uh... But he wanted to blow that file open. Surely you didn't think your notes were in there. Well, there's no use trying to fool him, Mr. Marsh. I wanted to know what was in that file. I've told you there's nothing there to interest you. That's why I'm interested. But uh, I'm afraid if I show you, certain people are going to misunderstand. I'll misunderstand if you don't. If you insist. There you are. Take a good look. Oh, I I'm terribly sorry. I've never been quite so embarrassed. Well, I'm rather embarrassed myself. You see, liquor is Stone's strongest weakness. Hey, you can put this back now. The Indians have gone. Not me. That thing might be loaded. It's not loaded. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I'll prove it. I still don't believe it. Well, what do you know? You live and learn. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, gee, Mr. Marsh, I hope you're not mad at us. Not at all. Forget the whole incident. I value your friendship too highly to us. Holy smoke, Mike! Oh, boy. Can you imagine what would have happened if the gun was loaded? I don't think there's anything else we can do, Mr. Marsh, so we'll be going. Goodbye. So Mr. Marsh values our friendship too highly, huh? He's a smoothie if I ever saw one. What do you mean by that? Ellen, you sound like you think Mr. Marsh is the Cobra. Could be. What? Well, why would he have all that information about Saunders? Ellen, do you realize what you're saying when you say what you just said? All right, if I'm wrong, I'll eat my words. What some girls won't do for a square meal. Do you think those shoes arouse Strager's suspicions? He hasn't sense enough to be suspicious. Hmm. I was invited to that banquet Miss Brent is giving for the police department. Perhaps we will attend the little party after all. Well, well, as one detective to another, welcome to the Crime of the Week program. Thank you. Right this way. You too, sir. Glad to have you aboard. Thanks. As one right. detective to another, he couldn't find a loaf of bread in a bakery. You got Hello. yourself right that way, man. Ah, guest of honor, Lieutenant Campbell. And Lieutenant Gilly. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> nice to see you. Yep, the two best detectives off the air. If you two guys don't get off the air, people are going to stop breathing it. Oh, don't be like that. Look, pals, he lets you and I go over the bar. I want to buy you a nice Irish drink. Yeah? What's that? A Mickey Finn. A <laughs> Mickey... Hey, now listen. Now, now, boys, remember this is a peace conference. I hope you're going to appreciate all the nice things I wrote for the boys to say about you on the broadcast. Well, that's not going to make the mayor any happier. <laughs> is he still riding you because you haven't been able to crack the Cobra case? Well, he says he wouldn't be a bit surprised if the Cobra was someone right under my nose. He might be right. What do you mean? <laughs> You'll hear about that on the broadcast, too. Stone. Yes. Lift it gently. That's right. Now down. Quietly now. Now the lights. There you are, Stone. Ladies, gentlemen, distinguished guests. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Perfect. And in exactly 51 seconds, we'll go on the air again with our Crime of the Week broadcast. Near the end of our program, and as a part of this broadcast, Mr. Miles and Mr. Strager will make a public apology to Lieutenant Rick Campbell. <laughs> and now, we're going on the air. Go ahead, Stone. Yes, sir. Once again, you hear the persistent footsteps of those dauntless radio detectives, Miles and Strager as they continue Operator. the relentless pursuit of Outside all the operators of crime. And now, the crime of the week will be analyzed for you by those masters. 
that pay phone. I'll get it. Hello? Who's this? This is a radio station, one of the ushers. I want to speak to Miss Ellen Brent of the Crime of the Week program. I'm sorry, she's on the air right now. The yes, I know. That's why we're going to get her on the studio phone. Who calls himself it's uh, a home speaking. A matter of life and death. Well, just a minute. Would any ordinary criminal go out to kill like the Cobra? And so it must be decided just what type of criminal the Cobra is. Is he a fiend? A maniac? Insane? Not accountable for his actions? Is he a fear crazed killer who through extraordinary luck has managed to slip through the... Hello? Hello? Operator, hello. Who, because of his knowledge of police records, is able to fight fire with fire. Is that why the Cobra has been successful thus far to elude the clever minds of the whole police department? The murder of John Saunders. You didn't give her too much, did you? No. She'll only be out for a couple of minutes. Good. We believe we're dealing with so clever that it will take concerted effort not only by the police, but by the citizens of the city to do something to ferret out this vicious killer. And so that is our opinion. The Cobra is not a mere criminal, rather he is some sort of a hideous monster. A monster possessing weird, almost superhuman intelligence. A super mind of crime. <laughs> I missed it. Quick, there's no time to lose. It's murder, all right. Gilly, take your men and search every inch of this place. Yeah. Put men at all the doors and don't let anyone in or out of this building. Okay. Has Ellen come back yet? I haven't seen her. Do you know who called her out of the studio? Well, how should I know? Warren, pick up Ellen Brent. Hey, wait a minute. You don't suppose he suspects Ellen? I don't know, but he sure acts like it. Mike, come on. Jerry, where are we going? We're going to beat Rick Campbell to the punch. We can't let him pin a murder rap on Ellen. Maybe Campbell's trying to cover up himself, huh? He is. He's out of luck. And the report just came in that Jennings' death was caused by poison, inflicted with a dart from a blowgun. Uh, here's a bit of good fortune, ladies and gentlemen. Miles and Strager just walked into my studio. Perhaps they'll say a few words to you. Thanks, Ralph. That's just what we want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Mike Strager and I were going to make a public apology to Lieutenant Campbell and the police department tonight. Well, we're not going to make that apology. That's right. Any time a murder can be committed in a room full of policemen, well, it's time we had a new police force. <laughs> you guys are digging your own graves. Yeah, we're digging our... What? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't say it. There was a guy in back of me. I was sitting, he was standing... One more I... crack out of you and you'll be lying. Flat on your back. Please. You folks ought to turn in your box tops and get some new policemen. All right. You guys have shot off your mouth once too often. Now go back to the other studio with the rest of the suspects. Suspects? suspects. Yes, yeah, suspects. Go on, get going. Ellen! Ellen, where have you been? Yeah, what happened to you? I, I, I don't know. I don't remember. I found her out here and she was carrying this. A blowgun. What's happened? Tom Jennings, the announcer, has just been murdered. Ellen, tell me, where did you get this? Don't say a word till I get your lawyer. A lawyer? Rick. What? She ties in with those footprints. Footprints? What in the world are you talking about? A woman's footprints were found at the scene of Saunders' murder. What? Hold this. Ellen, I'm sure this will all be straightened out. But in the meantime, I'll have to take you down to headquarters. What's the idea? Oh, oh, just routine questioning. Anyway, you'll be safer there. Come on, Ellen, let's get this over with. You boys want to come along? No, thanks. If we do, you probably try to hang something on us, too. We only have the slightest bit of evidence to substantiate what you say. The handkerchief that was held over your face. Or fingerprints other than yours on this blowgun. Well, at least you know the footprints aren't mine. Well, that we proved. But this. Lipstick. Good old smeary lipstick. I always wear it. Girls do, you know. But this is it, Ellen. This is the proof we need. If you would use that blowgun, there'd be lipstick on the end of it. Oh, that's right. Why, Rick, you're practically wonderful. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Don't mind me. Note for Miss Brent. Thank you. It's from Jerry and Mike. 
Don't tell me they've confessed. Oh, Rick, this is terrible. What? They're on their way to Marsh's home. What do you think's wrong with that? Look, this may sound fantastic to all of you, but... Well, I'm almost sure that Marsh is a cobra. Mr. Miles and Mr. Stranger. Well, this is indeed a pleasant and unexpected surprise. We hate to keep barging in on you like this, Mr. Marsh, but Ellen's been arrested for murder. Murder? Oh, you gotta help us, Mr. Marsh. We know she's not guilty. Oh, you do? Oh, sure, she wouldn't do a thing like that any more than you would. Well, have the police found any evidence against her? Well, they found her coming down the stairs. And she had the murder weapon with her. A blowgun. She was framed, Mr. Marsh. We know that. How do you know it? Well, you know Alan. Do you think she did it? No. In fact, I am positive she didn't. So are we. But the way Rick Campbell talks, you think those were Alan's footprints found at the scene of Saunders' murder. Why, he even said... Terry! Those footprints. Footprints? What about them? Well, those footprints weren't made by a woman at all. All right, they were made by a female impersonator, so what? Oh, Jerry, don't you get it? That's it. Those footprints were made by Mr. Marsh, the fool of police. I saw the muddy shoes in his workshop. Ladies' shoes. He hid them, and Jerry, he's the cobra. Wait a minute, are you trying to tell me that Precisely, he... Precisely, Mr. Miles. You're the cobra? That's right. And a most unfortunate discovery for you. I still can't believe it. Nevertheless, I'm the cobra, that master criminal at your service. At our service, we don't need anything. Well, we make a run for it. As soon as we do, we'll let you know. What's the matter? Don't you want to get out of here? Not now. Look! Oh, you picked a fine time to get smart. Well, I was right, wasn't I? Yeah. Mike, don't you think this would be a good time for Stone to take a trip? A trip? A trip, a trip. You know what a trip is. Oh, oh you mean a trip? Yeah, that's what I said, a trip. Yeah, if he falls for it, it might do him a lot of good. Yeah, it might do all of us a lot of good. Oh, uh, don't bother, I'll get it. Nice work, Mike. You cover Marsh, I'll get Stone. Stick him up. Marsh to Mish. I mean, Mr. Marsh. Come on, Latin boy, get up. Get over there and get him up. Gee, Jerry. What do you know? We caught the cobra. Yeah, look how easy it was. So easy, there'll be no credit to you. What do you mean, no credit? Well, my capture was so simple, so unexciting, that the public will think anybody could have done it. It would add nothing to your reputations as the courageous masterminds of the airwaves. Hey, Jerry, I think he's got something there. Never mind that. We got him. That's all that counts. Just keep your gun on these guys. Hey, where are you going? Get some rope to tie them up with. You know, you always were smarter than Jerry. You realize that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Jerry's pretty dumb at times, but he's too smart to admit it. Let's show him up. Let's make you the big hero who caught the cobra. Oh. How? Look, I'll open up my robe, and all you'll have to do is to shoot a couple of holes through it. Oh, I get it. That'll make it look like we had a big gunfight. Okay, Mr. Marsh, open up your robe. Oh, perhaps you better lock that door first in case Jerry might try to interfere and spoil it for you, huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. Stone, close those doors. Yes, sir. Uh-uh, keep yourself on the inside. Of course. That's smart. Thanks. Boy, is this gonna make Jerry jealous. Hey, drop that gun! It's not a gun, just a cigarette case. Uh -huh. Will you have one? No, I don't smoke. <clears throat> now. Right about here would be good. Excellent, Mike, excellent. Now, how about another one on this side? Mike! Mike! What's the matter? Let me in! Everything's okay, Jerry. Did you get the rope? Wait a minute. One more on this side. Everything's okay, Simpson. I think we can handle the situation now. Don't step another step forward. I'll put some real holes in you. Oh, no, you won't, my friend. You see, there are no more bullets in that gun. Huh? Right. Oh. oh, brother. Jack, my As you're the only ones who know I'm the Cobra, 
I'm forced to see that you carry the secret to your grave. Come, Stone. We'll spend the night in town. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. Help us. Sleep tight, little ones. <laughs> Stone. They went through that wall over there. There's a secret panel. Wait. They, you, you'll never catch them. They went into town. Ellen, imagine Marsh being the Cobra. I did, remember? Oh, what a story we'll have for our next broadcast. Yeah, about us catching the Cobra and everything. We haven't caught the Cobra yet. Well, all you have to do is have him picked up. Ellen, don't you realize that we haven't anything really on Marsh? What do you mean? He told us he was the Cobra. He'll deny it. You mean, now that we know Marsh is a cobra, we can't do anything about it? All the evidence we have is circumstantial and hearsay. We've got to catch him red-handed. There must be somewhere we could set a trap to catch him. Yes, but what kind of a trap? I've got it. When Marsh and Sol come back and find us in the hugger machine, they'll think we're killed. Why, they don't want people to come in here and look around. They can't have fellas all looking over the... We can have Rick and Gilly over by the door, and they can grab Jerry, hold of the... Jerry, wait a minute. You've rambled yourself into an idea. Have I? What do you know? I'm a genius. You and Mike can be the bait. Jerry and Mike. Why, certainly. Marsh thinks they're dead. When he finds out they're not, he'll come back and try and kill us again. Right. Oh, boy. That's perfect. Wait a minute. What am I saying? Oh, you can include me out of this. Now you'll be perfectly safe. With you as bait, catching Marsh will be as easy as catching fish in a rain barrel. Yeah. Well, you can catch your fish, but do you ever think of what happens to a worm? You're always thinking about yourself. <laughs> having escaped the death grip of the Cobra, refused to divulge his identity to the police. Instead, they will name this master criminal over the radio tonight on a, on a special broadcast. <laughs> they don't know how wrong they are, do they, Stone? Are you sure you can stop them from talking tonight? Did one of my plans ever failed? Well, no. Well, we shan't fail tonight either. I hope you're right. <laughs> We should be quite a sensation in these. It's what we shall accomplish in those. It will be the sensation. So far, so good. Hey, Stone? But, Mr. Marsh. Show your tickets, please. That's all, folks. I'm sorry. There are no more seats. But we have tickets. I'm sorry, sir. There are no seats left, even if you do have tickets. How do you like that? Pardon me, Mr. Walmart. Can I have your autograph, Mr. Miles? Certainly. <clears throat> We're great fans of Miles and Strager's. Me too. I'm sorry, sir. And it would be just like a tonic to my wife. I'm still sorry, sir. He says he's sorry. That poor old lady. Oh, let's help her get in. You said it. Pardon me. Tickets are good, but there's no more seats. I'm sorry, sir. How are you, Mr. Winterbottom? How are you? Oh, how are you? Yeah, and how are you, Mr. Winterbottom? How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Captain, this is Mr. and Mrs. Winterbottom. They're friends of my grandmother's. Glad to know you. Yeah, just pass them right in. But there are no more seats, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, let me talk to that guy. Look, bud, why don't you get some sense? We're Miles and Strager. We're big shots on this network. I certainly, we're stars. We're colossal. We're tremendous. Why, we're even mediocre. I know it. What? Could... I'm sorry, sir, but there are no more seats. No more seats, the man says. Where's your chivalry? How can you stand oh, uh, there and look at those two? Uh, take her up the back way, the freight elevator, yeah, and give them this. This'll get you in. You look like very a... much. Hey, you look cute in gray hair. I uh, beg your pardon. Uh, you don't mind letting us in, do you? Certainly not, sir. And what would you say if I told you we're on the air in five minutes? And don't say I'm sorry. No, sir. I'd say it's regrettable.
Simple, eh, Stone? Yeah, both of them. <laughs> How do you understand? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Alan, it just occurred to me that if the cobra doesn't show up, we'll be dead ducks. For the curse of me, we'll be dead ducks if he does show up. Hey, you better get ready. We're on the air in two minutes. Is that so? You got any cream you want whooped? Yeah, our microphone's behind those curtains. Let's go. <laughs> How do you do, everybody? This is a special presentation by the Crime of the Week program. Tonight, for the first time in radio history, a murderer who is still at large will be named over the air. The Dodge Stone. At the other microphone, as the curtain opens, will be the masterminds of the airwaves, Miles and Strager. Hello, Crime of the Week fans. This is Jerry Miles. And Mike Strager. Despite the fact that the Cobra has not yet been caught, we feel it is our duty to reveal the name of this foul fiend, this vicious murderer. This desperate criminal's true identity will shock the world. <laughs> An attempt may be made by the Cobra to prevent us from making this startling disclosure. But we defy anything he can do. Smith hit him, didn't it? Yes, hit him. I can't Not understand it. For his actions, Another guy. A crazy yeah. killer who, through extraordinary luck, has managed to slip through the police dragnet each time. Or is he a man of sharp intelligence? Who, because of his knowledge of police methods, is able to fight fire with fire? <laughs> he may even try to kill us. With the awesome. type of He's poison stuck darts fall. with which he killed our previous announcer, Tom Jennings. That boy's a well-speaking Another dog. Let's get out of here. Killer. I've got to stop them. And I'm now we come to the my name. when for the first time on the air, we will name this fiend, this maniac, this killer. Why doesn't he stop talking? Brought to justice. He's got to so stop. once and for Don't all, stop. this fair city will be rid of this mad monster Don't of crime. Don't shoot. They'll hear you. This they know where we are. Don't understand these bodies up here are just dummies worked as wire it was all a plan to catch the cobra let's get out of here before the cobra really kills us yeah. come on well come on come on don't stand there like a dummy out the back way the freight elevator jerry i'm over here oh you're over there you look better over here Talk. what happened to that ventilator up there the staircase at the end of the hall Stop talking so much, you keep moving. 
Jerry, I could never stand high places. Even when I was a teeny little baby, I was afraid to sit in high chairs. Never mind the height. Just get away from that nice, clean, fresh air. Yeah, but there's so much of it between here and the street. What are you doing? I'm trying to get this rug off my foot. Come over here, and I'll try to get it off for you. Half mass. Oh, 